What's up guys and welcome back to today's tutorial on nested for loops. So just like a nested if statement, a nested for loop is a loop within a loop. So in the last tutorial we left off with this, just a for loop that incremented from 0 to 10, uh, incrementing by 1. So we're going to create a multiplications table. So I want you to change the i from 1 and I want you to say less than or equal to 10. And then let's create some space here. We're going to create another for loop to so say for int k equals 1. So it's very important that this uh, counter is different to the previous counter. And I'll show you why uh, a little bit later on. So say k is less than or equal to 10 and k plus plus. And now we're just going to output to the screen what i times k is. So sys out i times k oh, times k and what we're going to do here is we want this i times k to print out on the same line so we're going to take away this ln so this is just saying print to the screen so it won't add a new line once this has been printed out then what we want to do is when we've got to the end of this line we want to create a new line so what we're going to do is we're going to take this i out of here and just say print line, so that's just going to add a new line at the end of this one. So if we run this, we can see we've got a bit of a mess here. Uh, what it's done is it's printed them out next to each other without adding any spaces in between. So let's just add a space in here. Uh, there we go. And we run it again. It's still looking a little bit messy. So what we're going to do here is put an escape character. Now, all an escape character is is a way of programmatically writing um, an unusual character, such as a enter or a tab. So if we put backslash T, that stands for tab. So if we run this again, what it's done is wrote out I times K, put a tab in, and then kept going. So what's happened here is we've done our first loop, uh, our first test here and it's gone into this loop and it's executed this loop 10 times which you can see here so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then it's incremented i and done this loop again up until i equals 10 which is this this, la this last line here and so like as you can imagine this could become really useful when you can get your computer to repeat tasks over and over again so in, uh, between this and if statements, it's going to make up pretty much the core of every application you make. So uh, like I said before, you have to make sure that your counter variables in here are different to the ones in the outer loop. Because if you don't, it's going to throw an error because you've already defined the i variable here. So you can't define the i variable again there, otherwise you're going to get an error. So when, uh, that's it for simple for loops. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at a for each loop and combining looping with arrays. If you're liking this series so far, please like and subscribe.